Shea University. Today we're in the shop and I want to talk with you about a possible failed encoder or sensor. Um, we get some calls on these from time to time. The almost sure sign that you have a failed sensor or encoder, which we're just going to use the term interchanging between the two of them, they're both the same thing, they're both encoders. On the older ATF system, which is what this is, the encoders are located on the front side of the motor and the motor's in the end of the tube. What those encoders do is they communicate with the control box every time the sensor goes past the magnet pickup or vice versa, the magnet goes past the sensor pickup, sends a signal via your um, controller and it tells the controller, hey, I'm located in this position, I've gone so many counts. What happens from time to time is, say so you've got these install in installed externally on a hard top. If you come around the back of here and look, there's wires that come out of this hole and there's no silicone on them. So as you can imagine, if this is on top of a hard top on the side or beneath and water gets in this wire loom and goes down in here, it runs down the casing and sits right here where the flywheel is and the flywheel will turn and spray water on it. So whenever you have any of these installed externally, you always want to take a goop of clear silicone, push the wires in, goop it up in there, and then pull them out just a little bit and let it dry and it forms like a plug to make that more waterproof, okay? So as far as the failed sensor would come back up, generally what happens is the complaint, the customer called, the shade is racked. Uh, Chris, I watched your video and I went through the shade racked and reset, um, got it all back to one inch, did a reset on number seven. I hit extend and what happens is um, and I'll just make one up. My port side started to go out just a little bit and my starboard side kept on going. Okay, great. Did you check your voltage? And that would be my first question. Did you check to make sure that you have sufficient voltage coming in? If your answer is yes, then the next step is it's probably going to be an encoder failure. What I would tell you is go back to your one inch measurement, do a reset on seven again, hit extend. If it happens again the same way, then I would tell you we're going to be looking for an encoder. So another sure sign that you have a bad encoder is when you try and retract the actuator that extended farther. So in this case, let's just say that the port stopped about a quarter of an inch from one inch. So it's one and a quarter inch and this one's three inches. So now we're going to turn on our starboard switch, which is number six. Turn on number six. And then we go to retract the actuator and it won't come back. It'll go out and come back to that same spot, but it won't come back any further. So then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to turn six off, turn eight on, hit reset, turn eight off. And now you're going to turn six back on. And now you're going to find that you can retract your actuator back. Okay. Once you get it back to one inch, you're going to turn six off seven on reset turn it back off now both of our actuators are parked at home i want to explain why that happened the reason why you cannot retract the starboard actuator is because the controller has not seen it move it's still hooked up and everything's fine but if the encoder in here has failed it's not communicating with the controller the original school of thought guys you know and myself included when you think about it well the port side started to go and stop, the starboard side kept going. Oh, it's the port side that's bad. It's actually not, it's backwards, the train of thought. The reason is, your port sensor or encoder is still communicating with the controller. So the controller and the port sensor are looking for the starboard. Well, they didn't get anything from it, so they stopped, they paused. Your starboard one is just taking off on its own, it's just happy, going its merry way, because the sensor is no longer working, it's operating on its own. So when you go to retract that actuator, the reason why you can't get it back is because the controller never, never saw it leave home. It's still thinking it's right here, okay? So when you do a reset on eight, you can retract it, then get it back to one inch, do a reset on seven, you're good to go. So again, that is pretty much a surefire way of determining that you have a bad sensor. Um, if you think you do before you call and order one or whatever, you'll get authorization to replace one, you think it's your starboard one like in this case it should be if it's number six that operates starboard it'll be this control this is your sensor lead what I would do is loosen this screw 
take this wire out, take your ohm meter, and what I would do is I would ohm from the end of this to the white on the end of the actuator lead, which is right here, the little 24 gauge white, and I would see if you have continuity from here all the way back to the controller, and you can do that by just popping the plug off and putting your probe the other end on the white lead. If you have continuity, then you know your wire is good, then go ahead and replace the sensor because you might have some other issue like a pushed out pin or a, uh, you know, had electronics installed and they accidentally put a screw through a harness. It's happened. So other than that, if you have any questions, uh, please give us a call or visit us on uh, shortshade.com under the service tab. Thank you.